So uh, the concept of catalyst is very, very simple. And what we'll actually do in kinetics is a really, really tiny bit. So basically, all you need to know are these major things about catalyst. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up the rate of the reaction. So it really doesn't have many other jobs than just that. Okay, things you need to know. These are the only three facts. One, it never affects the overall chemical reaction. So whatever products were going to be there before will be the same products after. Also, something that comes up all the time, uh, delta H doesn't change either. Okay, so if it was supposed to be exothermic before, it'll be exothermic after. It does not matter. Uh, now, facts about catalyst is it remains unaffected during the chemical reaction, which means it comes out the same way it goes in. What I mean by this is, for example, if it co goes in as a solid, it'll come out as a solid. If you put in three moles, it will come produce three moles. So sometimes it disappears in the middle of the reaction, but it always pops out back at the end again. And the last one is it lowers the energy or increases the chance for collisions. Now remember what I told you about chemical reactions. Chemical reactions occur because of collisions and energy. So either the catalyst will um, make those collisions happen more often, or it will lower the energy that the reaction that the the molecules need in order to react. And that's what I'm going to really focus my attention in on is lowering that energy. So make this little diagram in your notes. This is what is called an energy diagram. Okay, and what an energy diagram is, or energy pathway, sometimes a reaction pathway, um, it has a lot of different names, but they all basically mean the same thing. What it's showing you is, this is the energy path of the chemical reaction. So you can see that here are uh, the reactants and how much energy they have when they start. You can see as they go, they must gain all of this energy in order to react. Now, the first place where the reaction occurs is right here at the very top. So notice, look at all this energy that the molecules must use up in order to even start reacting. Now, this does not mean it's an endothermic reaction. I will get into that in a second. Now, once it gets to the top of this hill, my reaction actually starts to occur. So no reaction, there's no reaction all in here. It's only at the very top. And then it's sort of like a ski, uh, like going down a ski slope. If you've ever gone skiing or watched someone ski, you'll see that uh, what happens is, you know, it's very slow going as you go all the way up. You take the ski, the, the ski lift up to the top. But once you get to the top, it's all the way down to the bottom. So most of the time that you spend on the hill is spent going up the hill, going down very, very quick. We consider it instantaneous. So the vast majority of the time of the reaction is this first part of the hill. Now, the energy required is what is abbreviated EA, and EA stands for activation energy. And the activation energy is the energy required to make the reaction occur. Okay, so again, the activation energy is the energy required to make the reaction occur. So now, once this reaction, the activation energy has been hit, reaction goes and boom, it produces my products. Now, how does a catalyst affect this? Well, a catalyst is going to lower that energy. So my reaction will start off exactly the same. It'll start up the same path, and then all of a sudden, somewhere in the middle, it will drop. And notice that the line comes bounce back down. This is the effect of the catalyst. Okay? So notice that now my EA has been radically changed. Okay? Now my reaction only needs to gain this much. This is the new EA, my catalyst EA. So Notice that it doesn't need to change as much. It doesn't need to gain as much energy in order for that reaction to occur. And then, boom, it produces the same amount of products, same energy of the product, same everything. Now, how do I determine? There's one other piece of information that you can look at and find out um, information from in this problem. 
Okay. Notice there's also this delta E. This delta E is my energy. So this is determines whether or not this is endo versus exo. Okay. Now, how can I figure out if it's endo or exo? Simple. Do my products have a greater amount of energy than my reactants? Well, if I look, I can see that my products are lower on the energy curve than my reactants, which means that energy has been lost here. Okay, so this particular example is exothermic because my products have less energy than my reactants. My delta E is a negative value. Okay, or my delta H is a negative value. Same thing. If I was to produce an endothermic reaction, well, I apologize for all the colors here, but instead of this reaction ending down here, it might end up here. So now my delta E is up here. And this would be an example of an endothermic reaction. So this is a situation where my products end up higher in energy than my reactants do. So when the products have more energy, it's endothermic. When the products have less energy, it's exothermic. And that's everything you need to know about catalysts.